In this video, we're going to look at a study published in 1953 by Norman Gutman. And um, quite a few things were reported in this paper, but the main things that we're going to get out of this paper are basically operants, conditioning and extinction. So I've highlighted um, operant, conditioning and extinction. So let's just go through these. First, um, we can think about classical conditioning, and this is where a kind of a, an inbuilt physiological response is um, trained. And so the, one of the classic examples here is uh, Pavlov and his salivating dogs. So salivation is uh, like a low level inbuilt response. And so that would be called classical conditioning. What we're talking about here, though, is operant conditioning, and that refers to um, where the behavior you're talking about is more complex. In this particular study, we're talking about um, rats pressing a bar. And so <clears throat> operant conditioning is where the rats are conditioned, they're, they're learning to associate um, <clears throat> pressing of the bar with getting a sucrose reward. <clears throat> so what do you think extinction might mean? Maybe pause the video and have a think about this. Well, uh, hopefully you guessed correctly. Um, extinction would basically be learning the exact opposite. So if you now um, have a situation where the rats press the bar, but they no longer get re rewarded, that bar pressing is no longer reinforced. And so you might imagine that the rats would learn that pressing the bar is not very useful. And so they might stop pressing the bar. So that's what this um, paper is about. Let's have a look at the first figure here. What we have on the x-axis is the, the number of reinforcements. So you could, you could broadly think of this as um, time, behavior over time. On the y-axis, we have the rate of bar pressing, so responses per minute, and the scale goes from zero to 16 presses per minute. We can see that we have a number of curves um, all of them start low and go upwards. And so the fact that the curves go upwards means that the rats are pressing the bar more um, as they are learning. And so this is evidence of conditioning, that they are, they are, they are learning to associate the bar pressing with the sucrose reward. But we've got a couple of different curves here. And these are labeled by percentages. This is not really um, central to the points um, that I'm trying to make about conditioning, but um, it's interesting nevertheless. So these percentages refer to uh, the concentration of the sucrose solution. So for the 4%, that's the, the weakest, we can see that um, the rats were pressing the bar, they learned to press the bar, but they weren't really doing it that, that much. Maybe maybe it's not quite detectable, maybe um, it's too weak. However, around 8, eight to 16% sucrose solution, this elicits um, like a fast rate of learning and it results in the highest rate of sucrose rewards, uh, sorry, the highest rate of bar pressing. Strangely though, um, for 32% sucrose solution, this um, doesn't result in the highest rate of bar pressing. So maybe pause the video and have a think about why that might be the case. One possible reason um, that I can think of, bearing in mind that I don't study rats, is that potentially 32% sucrose solution is just too sweet. Maybe um, it just doesn't taste so good. That could be one reason. Okay, um, let's move on uh, to the extinction part of this experiment. So 
um, the rats would have done the conditioning on one day and then the next day they come back and they do the extinction part of the experiment. And what happens now is they might press the bar, but they no longer get any sucrose reward. And it's fairly kind of obvious to predict that what might happen is that the um, number of times, or the, the rate that the uh, rats press the bar is uh, decreased. And that is exactly what you find. Over time on the x-axis, what we see is that the number of responses decrease, um, not necessarily to zero, maybe because the rats kind of hope that maybe it will work this time perhaps, but the number of responses, number of bar presses goes down. And that is true uh, for all of the uh, sucrose concentrations, um, simply that the what we can see is that the rats who were given higher concentrations of sucrose the next day, perhaps they started off with um, a, a greater number of bar presses, but all of the groups, once the sucrose was uh, taken away, um, started pushing the bar a lot less. So that basically um, is a quick example of operant conditioning and extinction of that conditioning.